Hi, let's continue with module 3, intraday and balancing markets. And now in the second block, we'll focus on the intraday market. While the day end market is a pool and based on an auction mechanism, which we described extensively in the previous module, this intraday market is based on bilateral contracts, though they are handled on a central platform. That means that on this central platform, all actors of the electricity market may come at any time with some offers for buying electricity or for selling electricity. In terms of the style line, I mentioned any time, it is not obviously any time for any time. We have the L spot with gate closure at 12 at noon. The clearing results are known at 2 in the afternoon, so in terms of schedule and prices. And then from that moment, Elbas is active and consists of this continuous trading at best minus 33 hours before operation and on the other side, in the worst case, one hour before operation. So we can trade at any time within this window of opportunity. The reason why we have this central platform with bilateral contract is that we have less players, less liquidity, and then also the need for corrective action may highly depend on how there is new information appearing after the debt market clearing, being a new forecast for renewable energy generation or uh, issues with the maintenance planning or change in maintenance plan, possibly some contingencies or some problems with generators. And then we need to go to the intraday market for corrective actions. In terms of organization, we mentioned the term of electronic trading in a previous module. The intraday market, such as Elbas, could be seen as electronic trading. Let's go through a simple example of bilateral trading and for that we'll look at the portfolio of rogue trading. In, the, in that case here, we'll not go through a day head market, we'll simply consider that we have some long-term contracts, so some long-term bilateral contracts, and then just before operation, we'll look at how rogue trading may be able to change, uh, adjust the original schedule based on intraday market offers. So let's look at Rogue Trading. Rogue Trading has a portfolio with four units. There's a nuclear unit, there's two biomass units, and there's a wind unit. For the nuclear unit, the nominal capacity is at 500 megawatts. The two biomass units have capacities of 70 and 45 megawatts respectively. And finally, the wind capacity is of 120 megawatts. If we were to characterize the flexibility of these units, there are two categories. Nuclear and wind are not very flexible for different reasons. A nuclear power plant, you may not be able to change the set points every minute. And for a wind farm, you uh, get the energy as it comes, meaning when the wind blows, you get energy out of your wind turbines. And it's not like you can just turn a button and get more or less wind power from your wind farm. So we'll say that these two types of assets are not flexible, minus minus. For the two biomass units, most likely they are more flexible than the nuclear and wind assets and also one may be more flexible than the other so BM2 is more flexible in that case than BM1. In terms of marginal cost, so how much does that cost to produce the next unit of energy for each of these assets? The nuclear power station has a marginal cost of 30 euro per megawatt hour the two biomass units have marginal cost of 60 and 70 euro per megawatt hour. And finally, for the wind, the marginal cost is of zero euro per megawatt hour since it is free to get energy from the wind. Here, we are going to look at how we're going to trade in the intraday market based on this portfolio and bilateral contracts. What are the existing contracts that we have, as mentioned earlier, from the long term? commitment we may have from forward markets, from futures markets. There are some long-term commitments here where rogue trading is the seller with two different buyers, QualiWatt and IntelliWatt. Here for the first line, the commitment is of selling 30 megawatt hours at a price of 12 euro per megawatt hour to QualiWatt. For the second line, there's a commitment to 
provide 200 megawatt hours to IntelliWatt at a price of 35 euro per megawatt hour. We have another commitment, which is the other way around. So Rogue Trading is buying from Dirty Power an amount of 30 megawatt hours at a price of 20 euro per megawatt hour. And we have finally two other uh, supply commitments with EV Charge and L4U of 150 and 40 megawatt hours respectively at the price of 40 and 43 euro per megawatt hour respectively. So in total, Rogue Trading should generate 390 megawatt hours for this period of time of interest. The prices are low, so Rogue Trading should avoid using the two biomass units, BM1 and BM2, which remember have quite high marginal cost. So the cost of producing energy from these units will be quite high, even though you will be paid not so much for supplying this energy to your clients. Here, we have a prediction of wind power generation of 60 megawatt hour for this hour of interest. Consequently, the next unit we're going to use for generation, generating the energy we have to supply is the nuclear unit, N1, and it is to generate 330 megawatt hour. However, remember that when we schedule a wind power generation unit, you rely on a forecast. The forecast told us before that we could produce 60 megawatt hour for that hour, but then as we get closer to real-time operation, there is an update in the wind forecast, and it seems we're only going to get 20 megawatt hour from the wind farm. That means that we need to compensate for the 40 megawatt hour we were planning on generating from the wind farm, but we're not going to generate eventually. We said earlier that the nuclear unit is not very flexible, so it doesn't seem we can change the send point and get this 40 megawatt hour. Also, the biomass unit number one is down. Should we use the second biomass unit? Remember, the second biomass unit is quite flexible, so we could uh, get it to a set point for generating this 40 megawatt hour, but it's quite expensive uh, unit. We go to the intraday market and we look at the list of offers for buying and selling energy. So those who are offering to buy, they are on the demand side, obviously. And you see here, there are four offers to buy. First offer at 10 megawatt, second offer at 50 megawatt, third offer at 120 megawatt, last offer, fourth offer at 80 megawatt hour. The price that they are ready to pay are varying also. 55 euro per megawatt hour for the first one, 50 euro per megawatt hour for the second one, 35 euro per megawatt hour for the third one, and 27.5 euro for the last one. There are also supply offers on the sell side. You have here five offers where the first one is proposing 15 megawatt hour at the price of 50 euro per megawatt hour, the second one 55 megawatt hour at the price of 65 euro per megawatt hour, and so on, and so on. What would you do? Should we use BM2, or should we use some of these offers from the intraday market? What do you think? Instead of having to produce 40 megawatt hour at this marginal cost of 17 euro per megawatt hour, what we could do is actually to get this 40 megawatt hour through the offer of G4. The price to pay is 45 euro per megawatt hour, which is less than the 70 euro per megawatt hour it would cost us to actually produce it ourselves with BM2. So we say we hit that offer. And then the cost for us is going to be 45, which is the price in euro per megawatt hour, times 40 equal 1800 euro. This is less than having to produce with BM2. But actually, it's not the only option. You may be able to combine some of the offers on the buy and on the sell side. Here what we need is 40 megawatt hour. So what you could do in practice, you could actually buy 90 megawatt hour from G3 at a price of 47, and you could sell 50 megawatt hour at a price of 50 to D2. In practice, you would have a cost 
for buying this energy, this 90 megawatt hour, a cost of 4,230 euro, but you also get an income from selling on the other side, which is 50 times 50, 2,500 euro. Eventually, the total cost for getting these 40 megawatt hours will be of 1,730 euro, which is less than the 1,800 we had to pay if we were to hit the offer of G4. There are actually other possibilities, and you may want to look at this table and find a better option by yourself. Let's go now to the practical case of Elbas, which is the intraday market for the North Pool. Elbas stands for Electricity Balance Adjustment System. It's centrally operated by the North Pool, and as explained earlier, it is used for internal, but also for cross-border trading, and there it is obviously upon availability of transmission capacity. The products are very simple. Originally, they're expressed in terms of energy and price, and it's either for a given time unit or for a block. That means a set of successive time units. Note that the products in these various markets may evolve uh, through the years. So at the time you're watching this video, it is not sure whether we are still limited to this type of products or if there are new products that are being trading on the Elbas. In terms of gate closure, I explained to you that Elbas has a gate closure one hour before actual operation. But this gate closure may actually change in different countries. You see here, it's, it's been two hours for Norway, one hour for Denmark, Sweden, Finland and Estonia, 30 minutes for trading over the interconnector to Germany, the contact cable, and five minutes in Belgium and the Netherlands. This gate closure may actually have a high impact on your ability to trade since you may have access to different information, different possibility to change the set points of your units, etc. For those interested, you may visit this link and have a clear and extensive description of the Elbas as it is today. In practice, Elbas is a software tool. So as a market participant, you would download a Java application that will serve as a, as a GUI and you can access the market this way. All the offers can be declared there and all the offers will be visible there. So every time a new offer is entered, the information is updated so that all players know that this new offer is made. And obviously, every time some offers are matched, then the corresponding offers have to disappear from the list on your uh, software screen. In terms of offers, there are two types of offers, obviously, ask and bid. So on the ask side, you have the ask price, that's the price for which you are ready to sell, and then you have the bid price, which is the price at which you would buy. In practice, the participant just look at their screen, and if they want to buy or to sell, they just hit the corresponding offer, which means that it is accepted. Again, you can look at the user guide for Elbas to have more detail about how it works. Let's go through a practical example to see how easy or difficult it is to play in this intraday market. Let's now look at the case of We Trust in Wind, which operates a wind farm with 50 megawatt nominal capacity. And here is the schedule for the wind farm as cleared through the dead market. As you can see, 50 megawatt is here, zero megawatt hour is here. So the wind farm is supposed to generate around 20 megawatt hour for the first half of the day. And then based on the forecast, I guess, there is an increase in wind power generation going up to nominal capacity by the end of the day. If we were to look in detail at some of this scheduled uh, supply from the wind farm, you can see between 6 and 7, there is a schedule of 40.1 megawatt hour, between 7 and 8, 41 megawatt hour, etc., etc. Also, these are the prices which come from the clearing of the dead market. All right, so now let's look at what's happening in practice. We are going through the day, we have this schedule, this commitment, and beside the blue line that gives you the schedule, we have here in red 
what we are actually producing. For the first hours of the day, here up to 8 in the morning, it seems it's going very well. The forecast was very good and we are producing as scheduled. Remember our schedule here and the corresponding prices from the day and market. We have some traders who look at the intraday opportunities and on our elbow screen, we have these various offers for the evening. We have sell and buy offers. We have different quantity on the sell and buy side and different prices also. Would you take any of the, these offers or would you just wait? Let's wait a little bit. Now, we are a few hours after. What's happening? It seems that the wind power generation that we actually observe at the site is diverging from our schedule. You see our schedule here again in blue and this is what's happening. So it seems that this picking up of wind power generation is happening earlier than what we expected. We have this schedule for the evening. So for this hour here, what are we going to do? Are we going to look at our offers on the Elba screen and buy or sell? What would you do? Let's wait a bit more. It seems a few days after, now we are just one hour before 6 p.m. Looking at the trajectory, we're still overproducing quite a lot, though it looks like it's converging back to what we had originally scheduled, or does it? We have an updated set of offers here for buy and sell from Elbas at different prices for different quantities. Would you buy? Would you sell? It's difficult to say. And now that we're getting to this hours of interest from 6 to 24, we realize that actually we are back to schedule. So what may have happened if we have been hitting some of the offers, maybe we would have gotten stressed and would have bought or sold some energy while it was actually not necessary since we are back on schedule for these hours of interest between 6 and 10, 11 in the evening. Conclusions by the end of the day, it may be difficult to foresee the actual imbalance or the deviation from your original schedule that would need to be fixed eventually. Decision-making processes in that environment of adjustment markets can be quite complex and can be possibly stressful. It's possible to design offering strategies in this market that are based on updates in information uh, from uh, the outside world and from the Elba screen, but it's quite difficult. You may clearly want to use more information than just what you have from your own forecast, observation of wind power and the offers on your screen. As I just said before, you may have other type of information from the outside world, what are the prices in the neighboring countries, what you expect the balancing market to be in terms of prices, in terms of volume, so that you may decide in terms of arbitrage, do I want to buy or sell now or do I just wait for the balancing market? As a consequence, a practical consequence of this complexity, in general, we see that the volumes and the liquidity in such intraday markets is quite low. There is expectation that this changes soon in the future as we are integrating the intraday mechanisms for the whole Europe and that it may, able, it may be able to match directly offers for buy and sell for all uh, the different countries in a global market. This means that we could have more liquidity and also there may be more simplicity in matching if this becomes automatic. Thank you for listening. Now I would like to invite you to use the self-assessment quiz to check your understanding.